Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Rossi. Thank you for your continued support. And I wanted to dive into this real quick, you all. Alright, yes, yes. Jesus was not an attention seeker. We're going to let that sink in while I give y'all this quick reminder that before you get lost in the message or go tackling another task while listening, hey listen, we all do it, <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that other fellow chosen survivors can get the message as well. And remember, you can always share these with whoever you know will benefit from the information. Thank you in advance, yes, alright, but Jesus was not an attention seeker, you all. Stop and think about this, all right, chosen one, listen. How many of us, okay, you know, as we grew up, all right, I'm not talking about in childhood when it's natural for the child to want the attention of the parent and things like that, okay? Natural part of childhood development. I'm talking about once we, become, once we get older and we start to mature as we're supposed to, okay, and we lose Okay, yes, yeah, we start putting away all those childish things. Because one thing that stands out about this, and, you know, when God brought it to my attention, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Because with Jesus, okay, yeah, see, chosen ones, we never, we never, no, we never cared about that, okay? Once we got older and stuff like that, we didn't care about attention. That was not ever our, mm, no, okay? We could care less. Like, many of us you know, that we've had narcissistic abusers tell us, oh, it must be nice to have all these people staring at you. And we're like, huh? We're not even, I mean, we're just going about our Heavenly Father's business. Grocery shopping, whatever. You know, we're thinking about something else like a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something like that. We're not even, huh? No. It's the, the reason they notice that stuff. And here's the other thing, too. Is that as far as people staring at us, no, it's not as... Okay, remember how narcissistic abusers overblow everything? Okay, it's never, it's not as big as they are trying to uh, uh, portray it to be. Okay, it never is. Alright, because the reality is, most people out there, this is another reason why we learn to stop caring what other people think. Because they really don't. Okay? <laughs> so, when we are navigating through the fallen world, you all, we start to realize that, that nobody cares. Okay? <laughs> the only ones who do care are the narcissistic abusers. They're the ones who are so concerned with how society will see them, how society would perceive them. They're so concerned about uh, their outward appearances as far as what other people would think, stuff like that. Okay, you all, yes, okay? They're, they're more concerned. Remember, God even tells us. All right, we don't. Well, why? Why you are not judging by the outward stuff? Okay, no. God is only looking at the heart. Okay, that's it. You know, action. Right? How a person. You know, for example, if we go to dinner with somebody and they're treating us nice, but then they're rude to everybody else. Uh, 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 that's a red flag. That is a red flag right there. But Jesus was not an attention seeker. After all, what did he tell his parents when they went looking for him? I mean, as you know, parents would. I mean, he would just consider what what we would consider a teenager, so to speak, or a young adolescent at the time, you know, age-wise. But he was already doing his father's work, our Heavenly Father's work. And it just popped out when God brought it to my attention. I was like, that's right, because he was not an attention seeker. He was going all about his Heavenly Father's business. But his parents, naturally, they went looking for him, you know. And so I remember, it's like Jesus told his, his parents, it's like, don't you know I am to be all about my father's business? Okay. See, that right there lets us know that Jesus, he was not a pushover. This is for who, whoever needs this reminder. Jesus was not a pushover. He was bold as a lion. Right? He was. He taught tough love. I did a video on that quite some time ago on this channel. Alright? And it, yes, it, it's titled, Jesus Taught Tough Love. Alright? Because he was not a pushover. But see, the enemy has got a lot of people out here thinking that all that mushy, gushy, falling all over each other that we see the narcs do. You know, that's, that, the enemy's trying to portray that kind of behavior as 
Christ-like. Uh-uh, that's toddler behavior. Jesus was very mature. Mm-hmm. He was very mature. Right? He was, you know, he knew about the spiritual energy transfer. He knew that about the spiritual weakness and high. Of course he did. You know, he could see it. He could sense it. Why do you think he told Peter to get behind him? He told Satan, get behind me. <laughs> okay? For you are an offense to me. So it's like, okay, because he knew. It's that's when, when Peter was doubting. Okay, remember that demon of doubt. You know, Peter was doubting what Jesus was telling him was going to happen. After all, between Jesus and the Heavenly Father, they knew what, what the game plan was. Okay, they knew what they were doing. And they also knew that man would not believe. Okay, because let's face it. All right, you know, when walking in the flesh, that's walking by sight as well. Okay. Walking in the flesh is walking by feeling and walking by, by sight and, and things like that and letting their, you know, their emotion control them. That's walking in the flesh, okay, you all? When we are walking in spirit now, mm -hmm, when we're reborn, God awakened us, we're reborn, we're walking in spirit, we're walking by faith, not by sight, right? We have 100% trust in God, all right? So for anybody who is not quite there yet, hang tight, you will get there naturally, when God sees you're trying, never forget, when God sees you're trying, He's going to take care of the rest. Absolutely. All right, so we always got to put God first and keep God in everything that we do because everything that we're doing is for the glory of God. That as it should be. All right, everything that we do is to glorify God. And that's what we are instructed also to do in Scripture is that to be mindful. You know, we have to do things with intention but also with the purpose of glorifying God in whatever it is he put in us to do. It should be for the glory of God, no matter what. But G but we don't need to seek attention. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is one thing I want y'all to, you know, you know, write this down however you want to journal it, okay? To remember this going forward. For when you get in your purpose, those of you who are in your purpose you know what I'm talking about. For those who are not yet, once you get in it, Okay, once you get in it, your attention, you're going to fall in love with it, like I've said before. Yes, you will. You're going to fall in love with it. And, I mean, that's inevitable. Okay, because you're, you, you're, 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 like, you're falling in love with the purpose because you're in, you're, you're, you've got that love of God and love from God. Okay, be in love with God. Okay, there you go. Of course, that's inevitable. And so he's going to help you come up with the idea to create and stuff as he molds and shapes you. All right? But once you're in your purpose, your attention is what I want you to take note of. Your attention is going to be focused 100% on whatever it is that God has you doing. The instruction that he has given you to carry out his perfect will. All right? Your attention should be focused 100% on that. Uh, it doesn't mean not to seek wise counsel. Of course, he tells us to do that. Because, again, remember, God uses us to deliver messages as well, obviously, right? What are we up here doing? Mm -hmm. Letting the Holy Spirit remind y'all of something and to help you understand better about Jesus, that he was not an attention seeker. All right? He stayed focused on his Heavenly Father's business 100%. All right, he did, and so that's what we're to do. That's part of becoming more Christ-like. Doesn't mean that we don't, you know, converse with each other, interact with one another, and seek wise counsel. Of course, all right. I myself included, you all. You're not alone. I have some fellow chosen one that I go and consult the God Spirit in them as well. So, like, if I'm trying to solve a problem, I'm going to go seek some wise counsel to kind of brainstorm. Because I am trusting the God spirit in them. Because I know they got logic and reasoning. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's the thing. We learn, yes, real quick. We learn that we stop asking. If we've identified a person as a narcissistic abuser, we don't ask them for advice. Uh-uh, 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 uh No. Because the enemy will always give you bad advice. Uh-huh. The enemy will always give you advice that will trick you into going in the wrong direction. Never forget that. Right? The enemy will do that. 
Because remember, if it's a narcissistic abuser, the enemy has access to them to use them as a mouthpiece. And so the enemy is going to purposely and deliberately try to steer you in the wrong direction. So that's part of why we need that discernment. So then we can determine, okay, and then we ask God, because that's what I did, right? Just so you all can put it in perspective. When I had a, I would, it wasn't a bad issue or anything, but it was a little something that I needed to solve, right? So that we could continue planning, preparing, and producing. And to remedy that, I reached out to a fellow warrior who I knew, got, hey, listen, I know that she's the chosen one. And so I brain, we brainstormed, and we were able to come up with something, and it worked. So there you go, all right, to, to keep on keeping on. All right, so that's the difference. That If you have identif identified an arc, don't ask them for advice. Uh-uh, uh-uh, because remember, they are problem causers, not problem solvers. God is a problem solver. Uh-huh, that's right. And we realize this, but we don't, we don't need to seek attention. All right, so take note of this as well. I want everybody to remember this because a lot of us are living testimonies of this. That we, when we get in our purpose and we stay focused on it and we're pleasing the Godhead, not man, opportunities are going to come to you. All right, you will not need to go chasing after opportunities. No, they will come to you. God will bring them to you. All right, through whoever it is that he has already picked out to help you get where he needs you to be. The opportunities will come to you. And I'm going to give you all an example. When I'm um, looking at Quora over there to see if there's any question that I can answer or whatever it is that God puts on my spirit to post in one of the spaces. All right, for those who don't know it, we have two spaces over there on Quora. The Cognitive Dissonance space and the Devil and Narcissism space. And I have often referred to the Devil and Narcissism space being the ministry space. But let's face it, all right, because <laughs> the CD space is also, all right. So there you go, because we've combined the two, okay. Those are the two components, you know, Cognitive Dissonance and Narcissism of the spiritual battle, all right. The, the primary two. There's a lot of little things in there, yeah. But those, <laughs> those are the top two components in the spiritual battle for the mind. So never forget that. Jesus knew that, okay? But we don't, you know, when I go, when I go through there and then I, I'll see an opportunity. It is just, it's just there. It pops up for me to promote or remind everybody about something or to direct them to one of the videos on this channel to get the answer so that it just comes up and I'm like, ah, there's the opportunity and so we, we seize it. I didn't, go, I didn't go chasing after anything, it just presented itself. So that's just one little example. And then other opportunities that are meant for you. Stop and think about that. Now the enemy will try to send what we call scammers Okay, and they will come at you in disguise as a good opportunity. That's why we got to have that discernment also, you all. Because the enemy, would, as always, wants to trip you up. And wants to try to knock you off of God's path. Especially God's healing path. Right? So we learn not to let him do that. And so that's how we know we've got the power and authority to not let the enemy get access to us like that. And we don't fall for it. All right, so if anybody has fallen for a little something and you learned your lesson, there you go. You repent. All right, we all have to learn first. All right, once we learn of it, then we go, okay. All right, because if it is meant for you, it will happen. All right, if it is a opportunity from God, it will happen. All right, and you'll know. Okay, your, your intuition will know. All right, seriously, God will let you know whether it's from him or you, you'll know whether it's from him or the enemy. All right, and that takes practice and time and patience and things like that as well. But just never forget that. That Jesus was not an attention seeker, you all. I don't care what the enemy tries to, uh, you know, spread out there or whatever. I don't care. Because we know the devil is a liar. All right, but being, you know, being a, a pushover uh, and an attention seeker like a toddler, no. Jesus was none of that. All right, Jesus taught tough love. He was mature obviously and you know he was just all about his father's business okay and he was a healer 
So there you go. All right, everyone. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. Check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.